Hi, welcome to class. And at the beginning of every class, I like to take just five minutes to discuss probably the most important work product for the future of your career, which is your email. This is the single work product that other lawyers are most likely to know you by. You know, by contrast, if over the summer you were working in some kind of law office where you had to draft a big memo, maybe a 10 page memo, and the partner or other senior lawyer who assigned that to you, you know, maybe read it, hopefully read it. And if you did a good job, that's great. Uh, and maybe somebody else read it too, that's always possible. Uh, uh, by contrast, if you look at the emails that you do in a job, that's probably the first work product that all of your colleagues will know you by. And if you wrote a really helpful email, that might be shared widely within your law office or with clients. And on the flip side, if you wrote an unhelpful email, sometimes those get shared widely as well. So email is probably the way that you create your professional reputation. And it's worth thinking about how you can write an email so that it gives you the kind of professional reputation that you want. So email is a success, key to success in your career. The way that I think about this and came to think about this through my own practice was that the supervisors that I was working for and that you all will work for think of themselves as overwhelmingly busy. Whether or not they're that busy, maybe you catch them playing Candy Crush, et cetera. They think of themselves as overwhelmingly busy. And so you want to think about how you can make life easier for them, that you're the kind of person they want to work with. And you can do that through a couple of methods. One is be succinct. Two is make it easy to respond succinctly. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And then anticipate that response might take a while. So let's think about what each of these mean. So first, if you want a response, make sure your email contains a question. If you've started to write an email and it starts with something like, I'm feeling confused or I'm having a hard time understanding, if you've started your email that way, that's definitely not the way that you want to send it. That may be part of your process of writing out what your questions are, but by the time you send that email, it should start with your point and that often is a question. If you have more than one question, you can number them. That can make it easier for the senior lawyer to respond. If possible, you probably wanna make it so that your questions can be answered with a simple yes or no Obviously not all questions can be answered that way, but basically when you're thinking about what kind of response you're gonna receive, it's helpful to think about somebody who's overwhelmingly busy. When I was writing emails to my supervisors when I was in practice, typically what I imagined was you know, that partner, she's in the line at the airport with one hand on her phone. She has to read my email and provide a response within 40 seconds before she throws the phone in the bin in the security line. And I can tell you that that was the reality of how many of the partners I worked for actually uh, had time, if they did, to respond to those emails. So the ideal email you could potentially respond to with you know, one, yes, two, no, three, let's talk Wednesday. So to do that, you wanna shorten your email by cutting out unnecessary words and sentences. Some other suggestions, a little bit more yeah, advanced for email. One is indicate what you'll do if you don't get an answer. Sort of a nightmare email that a senior lawyer might receive would say something like, before I get started on this memo, please let me know whether you want it in Q&A or formal memo format. And the reason that's a nightmare is because that partner might not get to that email till a week later or 10 days later. And when they read it, all of a sudden they're thinking, oh no, this associate hasn't been working on the project they're supposed to be working on for these entire 10 days. So just anticipate that a response might take a while and indicate what you'll do if you don't get the answer. Another suggestion, read your email aloud to ensure there are no typos. Remember, this is the work product you will be known for. So you want it to reflect your professionalism. I can tell you that when I've worked for supervisors that are particularly uh, careful and don't like typos, I would actually 
print out a draft email and read through it a couple times before sending because I didn't want to have any typos in it. Generally, you're going to want to mirror the formality of your supervisor, but err on the side of formality. This is a tricky one, right? Because some supervisors are really informal and some are more formal. Generally, use your people skills, right? If somebody's formal, maybe be a little bit more formal with them, but obviously you're the junior lawyer. So even if they're extremely informal, you might want to be a little, uh, a little more formal than they are. So it's a tricky issue. You just want to be both friendly and respectful. You want to use your people skills and take care with your emails to ensure that it shows you as somebody that everybody would like to work with.